So I'm showing you here uh, now uh, what can be done in order to see in Python the time domain samples. Let's suppose for some reason you are interested in getting, uh, in viewing and analyzing the time domain samples received by the SDR. Uh, usually, as I said before in the other video, usually you are interested in, in frequency domain, but sometimes you, uh, we want to use the SDR as, an, uh, as a kind of a oscilloscope or uh, for whichever reason you want to check if everything is alright in time domain. So this is very easy, as I said, there is a relation between the number of samples and the sample rate. So here I'm just creating a, a vector that to describe the time axis, the variable is called the time axis. I'm just creating using this lin space, uh, our form, uh, lin space function from NumPy, which is quite the same as MATLAB uses, and it starts from zero. And this is the, the, the final uh, number. This is the initial number. This is the final number. The final number in time is defined by the number of samples divided by the sample rate, as I said. And how many, how many samples uh, the time axis is supposed to uh, contain? The same number of samples from our uh, acquired raw data. Basically, that's it. Here, I'm just saving, uh, I'm just showing using the plot, the, re the real part and the imaginary part. And this is, I'm dividing by one to the power of minus three, just in order to see in milliseconds. As you can see here, our number of samples I set to be 0.01 times the sample rate. Instead of one second that I'm using before, I'm using a very low number, you are going to see why. So I have the RTL connected in my USB port, I run it, and there we go. I see here what the time domain samples using right now the time uh, axis here, this is correct, 10 milliseconds, which is equivalent to this uh, number that I put here. Uh, now I'm having the green is the real part and the red is the imaginary part. This is quite common. We people usually expect to see very beautiful sinusoids uh, waveforms. That's not the case. Um, I'm showing you here the variables. As I said, the time axis has the same uh, amount of, uh, is the same size of our samples. I'm commenting on this thing here just to give you an idea, just to show you again. I run again and you'll see that I'm axis and the samples both have the same size as it's supposed to be. This is forced by this, uh, uh, this parameter that I was that I gave here in the time axis definition. So jumping to our uh, plot here, you can see here, this is the, this is the time domain. Uh, I can zoom in and as you can see, it's a very ugly waveform, nothing as expected before from the textbook waveform, sinusoids, very beautiful forms. This is actually what we receive from our uh, incoming data. Uh, this is pretty common as well. Uh, we are just analyzing the frequency domain. Sometimes we forget about it. Right when we start acquiring the data, this is very common. The first, the first samples, they are garbage. We have to be very careful about it. This is very important. When you compute the frequency domain of this data, we, ta we take this whole vector and we compute the frequency content, the frequency energy of this whole time domain series here, including this guy here. So if I take one second, it's going to be the one second, the average energy of one second. So that's the reason why you should be very careful when we are uh, computing the frequency domain, because the frequency domain of our acquired samples in time domain, usually they represent the whole time that we acquired. So 
it, it, it would be better if you just divide it in, in very small chunks, let's say one, uh, one millisecond, then would have, we would have the short time for your transform. So this is something that it has to be taken into account when you are using the data because we always have to take a look at the time domain because sometimes you have to switch on the LNA, sometimes you have to switch on some external amplifier. I'm putting here, uh, as I said before, 400 megahertz. We are not supposed to have any signal in 400 megahertz. And as you can see here in 400 megahertz, we have a much lower amplitude. What are those uh, peaks here? There are outliers. They are probably artifacts. They should be disregarded, right? So that's the benefit of seeing the, of visualizing the data in time domain. This ugly, data is related. this is what our SDR got from the air using my antenna in 400 megahertz. Why is that that and why is the reason why I put this 10 milliseconds here? Because if I for whichever reason acquire one which is two million samples, each one with eight bits, complex number, one second is going to be a lot of data. There is no problem running it. As you can see, I see the data here. But if I do the same, if I want to do a zoom here, as you can see, it takes a much longer time. As you can see here, my computer has 16 gigabytes and it takes a long time. So we have to be very careful because sometimes we are not, uh, uh, it's not clear, it's not pretty much understood that we are dealing with large chunks of data. One second is equivalent to 2 million samples, each one with 8 bits. If you are talking about a, two, a 12 bits, uh, 12 bits SDR, it's going to be much worse. So that's what I wanted to show you. Thank you very much.